Today I have a challenging problem for you. On this 4x3 chessboard, there are three white knights along the top and three black knights along the bottom. Using only legal chess moves, so alternating turns, we need to swap the locations of the black and white knights. But at no point in time can a white knight threaten a black knight or a black knight threaten a white knight. So for example, both black and white control this square, so it's off limits. You can't move there. Pause the video and give it a try. You can use the link in the description to actually try it out. It didn't take me long to realize it was a tricky problem. Even from the start, there aren't many places you can move the knights because the board is so narrow and you aren't allowed to have knights of opposite color threaten each other. I kept running into dead ends or making mistakes and starting over. After about 10 minutes, I still hadn't solved it. And even if I had stumbled across the solution, I doubted I would ever be able to duplicate it. Was it even possible to swap the knights? I should note that I know it is possible if we relax some requirements and allow knights of opposite color to attack each other, or if we don't force the colors to alternate turns. This is known as the Six Knight Garini problem, named after the 16th century mathematician Paolo Garini di Forli, and it can be done in 16 moves. But is this challenge possible? You should definitely pause and try it out. This reminds me of a problem I encountered back in high school at a state math competition. In that problem, we were given a 3x3 three three chessboard with white knights at opposite corners and black knights at opposite corners. The task was to move the knights so that the top two corners had white knights and the bottom two corners had black knights. And in this problem, it was okay for knights of the same color to move twice in a row. And it was also okay for the knights to threaten each other. It sounds easy enough, right? Well, my partners and I started shuffling the pieces, but we kept running into trouble. The knights kept getting in the way of each other, and we weren't making much progress. In fact, we were so limited that we eventually decided it must be impossible. But at a math competition, you have to prove your answer. You can't just say, I tried a bunch of stuff and none of it worked. Therefore, it's impossible. You have to come up with a logical argument. But at the time, we really struggled to come up with a good argument. And later we learned that the tool we needed to describe our argument was a graph, a collection of vertices and edges where each vertex represents a location on the chessboard and each edge connects the vertices that a knight can jump between. Notice that vertex E isn't connected to any points because the knights can never reach it from any square. That doesn't look much easier, but we can arrange the vertices and keep all of the same information and what do we get? A loop. It's just a big cycle. If we put the knights back onto their starting points, we gain some additional insight into the problem. The knights have to stay on that same cycle, and no knight can ever get past another knight. So their order is fixed. It will always be black, white, black, white as we trace around the loop. But the configuration that we need for the solution would require the pattern black, black, white, white, black, black, white, white. This is impossible because the loop preserves the order. So there is no possible way to accomplish the task. Could we use a similar technique to determine whether our problem with the six knights on the four by three chessboard is possible? Let's give it a try. Label the squares A through L. Next, add the connections showing the possible knight jumps between the vertices. It looks pretty complicated, but if we take a minute to untangle things, we find that there is quite a nice structure here. We'll place the knights back where they belong. We have to make sure that two knights of opposite colors are never next to each other, and we have to alternate turns between black and white. It looks like we can do a kind of symmetric approach where black just mirrors white's move. There's just enough room for some movement. We're moving the black knights along the top path and the white knights along the bottom path. In the end, the black knights end up on A, B, and C, while the white knights end up on J, K, and L. We did it. Now we have to translate that solution back to the 4x3 grid. Watch closely to make sure that opposite colored knights don't attack each other. We did it. The black knights are on top and the white knights are on bottom. We just used math to solve a chess problem. The most beautiful math is like that. You convert a difficult problem into a form that is easier to solve. You solve that easier problem 
and then you convert your answer back to the original form. So now that you know how to solve this problem with a 4x3 grid, I'll leave you with a couple of related challenges. Can you swap three knights of each color on a 5x3 grid? Is it even possible? What if you had four knights of each color on a 4x4 grid? Is that swap possible? What sizes are possible? Give it a try and leave your answer in the comments. Thank you.